I've been riding on instruction, and his instruction has been taking me places. That is my own testimony. Senior pastor is not just the pastor of Royalty Christian Center to me. He's not just my pastor. He's a father, and he is my own father. I want us to celebrate him tonight. I don't know whether he's your own father, whether he's just the pastor, whether he's... I, you can do better. You can do better. Let's honor him tonight. And also, First Lady, we honor you tonight. Thank you very much for being a good father. You are fathering us very well. <laughs> Praise God. And I also want to appreciate all the ministers and deacons and the leaders of Royalty Christian Center. So today, we are looking at favor at work. And you might be wondering... Why this subject? Why, why, why do I need favor at work? Because it's one of the questions I've asked myself too. Why do we need favor at work? And before we go into that um, question, we are going to be looking at some brief definitions this night. What is even favor? Of course, most of us that are uh, Bible scholars, you, you've our teachings about favor, you've had definitions, you've read books on favor. But tonight, we are just going to look at favor from the practical dimension. Number one, favor is God's unfair advantage for his children. Hello? Favor is what? Is God's unfair advantage for his children. Are you saying that... Um, there are things that will happen in my life that I didn't ask for or work for, and it will show, just show up. Yes, that is favor. You might be wondering, okay, how come my own story has not been like that? From today, you start sharing that testimony in the name of Jesus. If everything in your life, you can point out to one labor, one struggle, one sweat, from today, you will start pointing at things in your life that is as a result of favor in the name of Jesus. So what is favor? Favor is God's grace bestowed upon his children. The grace will just come upon you. And you just get it right at every point in time. Some people call it his, his, his Midas touch. Everything you touch turns to gold. So according to Psalm 51, verse 12, it says, For you, O Lord, we bless the righteous. Who are the righteous in the house tonight? He said, With favor, you will surround him as a shield. As a shield, you will surround him. Psalm 51. So I'm sorry, 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, verse 12. So we can say from that passage that favor is a shield, divine protection. So no matter what you are going through, no matter the challenge, if you need a shield, favor is available to shield you. From economic disaster, favor is available. From health challenges, favor is available. Are we together tonight? So whatever areas, maybe embarrassment want to show up, just remember that favor is a shield. It's going to shield you from every form of embarrassment in the name of Jesus. So some of us might be asking, so work and favor, how does it relate? I think it's not out of place for us to define what work is too. <laughs> so what is work? Everything that you do, that you put your hands into. In fact, the Bible says, whatsoever you find, your hands finds to do, do it. And don't just do it. Do it what? Diligently. Very well. Very well. So anything that you do, whether it's for the purpose of making money or for the purpose of fulfillment, that is work. So why do we need favor at work tonight? Probably that's the next question in your mind. Why do I really need favor in the workplace? So, and the workplace we are talking about is not just uh, you are building career. It can even be your own business because you are working that, what? In that business. It might be open door in that business that you desire. 
So why do I need favor in that business? And one thing that we need to understand as Christians is this. As far that you are walking on this earth, you what? You need favor. In the realms of men, you need favor. In as much as a human being that will make some decision that must go in your favor, you need favor. Angels don't sign contracts. Right? Angels don't do what? They don't sign contracts. They don't review your proposals. So you need what? You need favor. You might be wondering, okay, how come? How will it happen? Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 says that the king's heart. The king's what? So whoever is standing, probably reviewing your contract right now, or making a decision on your behalf, probably some people are even reading your WhatsApp now, they are deciding, should, they, should we give it to him? Should we not? Should we buy from him? Should we not? Should we reject it? Should we not? God will change their heart in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody is not saying they believe in amen. Men decide these things, so. I was still having a discussion with someone. He said, ah, the price they put on that. Thing. I said, human being determined that price. He said, the day you understand that, the day you know that you can possess anything. Human being what? Determine the price. The same way you two determine some things in your life. That's the same way some people sat down. Whether in a boardroom, they look at their costs and say, okay, this is the amount I'm going to sell this thing. Favor will speak for you. You know, there's something pastor said many years ago. And uh, don't be tired if I'm referring to what pastor said. I mean, that's where I've been feeding for years now. So, <laughs> And in case, if this message looks like what he has preached before, I copied from the right source. <laughs> Praise God. He said, if God did not take you to your level, he will bring it down to your level. If God did not take you to the level of whatever you want to buy, he will bring that thing to your own level. That's what favor will do for you. Praise God tonight. So what are the importance of favor at work? Now that I understand what favor is, now that I understand the fact that there are men that we decide it's not only spirit. Your appraisers, like the, the child we had, it is human being that will look at your appraiser. And somebody can be looking at your appraiser and say, ah, that guy did not even greet me this morning. He was greeting me with nose. I beg. That promotion denied. That will not be your own story. So what are the importance of favor? Before we look at the importance, even the Bible said Jesus grew in favor before men. So, for the earthly ministry of Jesus to manifest, he needs the favor of men. Imagine, Jesus wanted to pay a bill and there was no Peter to send to the river to go and catch fish. They would have arrested him more. Because there's no, I mean, at that point in time, there's no way out. He needs men around. So, he has somebody to call, yeah, you go. Haven't you asked, I mean, I don't know whether you have ever asked yourself before. Between the time Peter went... To the fish and the time he brought the money back. What was the discussion that was, was going on? <laughs> Praise God. So, importance of favor at work. Number one, favor grants you speed. See, there is something um, many years ago I had on this altar from our senior pastor. He said, your tomorrow, your own tomorrow, that's your prayer point. I want to be this. Is somebody's yesterday. Imagine you aligning yourself with that person. You just be sure you know, don't climb that place. When I climb that place, this was the outcome. So this is the step. You will gain speed. Oh, you are not saying it. You will gain speed. So favor grants you speed. So what is taking people 15 years to gain promotion? Like this. People will be wondering, how come? How is he doing it? Ah, maybe he's using something. Is using favor. 
favor open doors to people and opportunity. Favor do what? Open doors to people and opportunity. There are some doors that it is, you just need to meet the right person. The same way, probably you are the one that decides what your family will eat tonight. That's the same way some people are sitting down and deciding how the resources of this country will be shared. As simple as what, we, what are we eating tonight, rice? Or that's how we say, okay, who is getting this? Who is getting that? Who is getting this? Who is getting that? How are we, okay, who are we giving this contract to? I'm just painting this picture so that you can see how easy God can favor you. How easy your name will be added to that list. It's just a decision. Just a decision. That no, it is time to favor you. That will be your story in the name of Jesus. Favor opens the books of remembrance. Some of us have labored and labored and labored. It's as if people have forgotten us. There will be a night tonight. King will not be able to sleep. Because the book must be open. Oh, somebody is not getting it. Kings will not be able to sleep because a book must be open on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Favor, open books of remembrance. Everywhere you have labored in the time past, it looks like it was wasted. You have been wondering, how, when, when will this reward? You know that the reward has not showed up. That reward will show up from tonight in the name of Jesus. Favor magnifies your work. It makes noise. Have you to see a situation whereby two people are doing the same thing? And one is noise abroad. Noise everywhere. You'll be wondering, is it not true that this person is selling? It's true that this other person too is selling. How come the noise of Mr. A is more than the noise of Mr. B? That is favor speaking. Every of your efforts that looks like you are putting your life into and is not gaining the momentum, is not gaining the noise, is not gaining the notice, is not gaining the announcement that it deserves. Favor will speak tonight in the name of Jesus. Favor brings you to the realms of achieving the impossibility so that God can show himself forth in your life. That is a realm. Oh. The angels appeared before Mary and he said, you are favored, woman. He said, favor us how? And it looks like <laughs> Mary was entering into trouble. In Luke chapter 1 verse 35, he said, no, you are favored. Something will be done in your life that forever will share the story. Oh, you are not getting it. Something will be done in your life that forever, the same way we are sharing the story of Mary, will be sharing your story forever in the name of Jesus. Now that we know the importance of favor, how do we activate favor at work? What are the things that we can do? What are the things that we can do from tonight that you can start doing? And suddenly, favor will be activated in your life. Number one, connect with the Holy Spirit. Connect with what? We work with human beings. So most of the time, we don't even know what is going on in their mind. I remember the, um, I had a story. And the guy said... Ah, that they did a praise, I said it's not, it's, it doesn't relate with people very well. And um, he asked the question, okay, why am I not relating with people? He said, you don't greet, you don't do all this. Said, okay, no problem, I'll start greeting. So the day he made up his mind that he was going to start greeting, he greeted his boss, and the boss was in a bad mood. <laughs> and he did, why are you greeting me? Are you part of them? Have you joined them? Have you done this? <laughs> he said, you people did a praise. I said, I'm not relating with people. Now I'm greeting. What happened now? See, you need the guidance of the Spirit of God so that you will know, okay, see, we are going to share some things tonight and we are already sharing them. So you know the one to pick, the one to use, and when to what? To use them. Are we together tonight at all? So you need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Everything that you do, God, how do I go about this? You are writing your CV. You have been jobless for some time. You have been applying the same way you have been taught. Now you need Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, Holy Spirit. How do we put this? 
You have been putting that application together. Denier, denier, denier. Propose that together. Nobody is opening it. Maybe the Holy Spirit will just say, don't worry, put your picture in front. But they did not teach us how to put picture. Ah, no, no, no. You put your picture in front. Put your picture. Full page, your picture. <laughs> it sounds foolish, right? That might be your own instruction. Holy Spirit. Number two. Connect with the right people. The power of relationship. You are working somewhere. <laughs> and you think that um, you can do it all by yourself because you've had some masters, you've had some PhD somewhere, you've gone for all the training, you have the technical know-how. The technical know-how will not give you the seat at the table. No, technical know-how does not take people to the seat at the table. You'll just be a messenger. You'll be the one on the field all the time. That's, what, that's how far technical know-how can take you. But when you relate with people, the day they are deciding that, oh, we now want to open a branch somewhere in Canada. We want to expand. Who shall we send? Who shall go for us? Say, there is this guy. I think he, believe, he behaves like Canadian people already. Let's send him. At that point in time, it is not your technicality because your technicality can be bought. If you think you are technically good, somebody else is better than you. Oh, you have PhD. Some people, even at 25, they already have two PhD. Oh, you can do this. There are people that are far younger than you that can do what you think you can do. So you need to relate with people. Relationship always produces after its kind. If you relate with somebody that is at the top, in no time you are going to get to that top. That's why the Bible says, take me to a rock that is higher than me. That rock are people. Hello? Who are the people that looks like your tomorrow? You want to become an MD? You want to become a CEO? Are you relating with people that are there already? Oh, you want to open a big factory that you have employees? Who are the people that look like that future? Start relating with them. Start feeling their pulse. Oh, you're an employee somewhere currently right now. You are doing something right now. And you're always wondering, ha, this old guy is always nagging. This old guy is always nagging. Put yourself in the shoe of that old guy. This one has gone up. Income has not increased. And you, you came. You apply for uh, upward salary increase. And you say you should not nag. Now, I mean, some of us had the news now. We are going to be paying 0.1. Don't let us even go there so that don't let us start that discussion. So people are thinking, oh, I can't. and you are thinking that very soon, don't worry, you two, you will have your own company. You start paying that same way. You will know how it feels. Whether you will now see whether you will nag or you will not nag then. <laughs> and listen to this. Who does not like you does not matter. Who likes you matters the most. I will repeat it. The fact that some people do not like your face, those ones, you can't really control what is going on in their mind. But the people that like you, the people that what will favor you, those are the people that matter as well. I mean, look at the story of Esther, for instance. The queen misbehaved. And they were having a discussion. And in that room, nobody would say, ah, excuse me, sir. King, sir, can I speak, sir? Can I have five minutes, sir? Nobody could speak for her. No one single person could speak for her. Council of elders. No elder can say, ah. In fact, they even, in fact, they exaggerated. It's like, ah, if we don't deal with this, that will be the culture. Something that happened in Asia, in Asia how come it will become a culture? Culture. In the oh, haba, exaggeration. Ah, people, people will speak on your behalf. Wherever you are not right now and decisions are taken, the God of royalty will make people to speak on your behalf in the name of Jesus. And they took a decision. She was not there and she was dethroned. Tied to, ripped off. And tied to men, ripped off. Suddenly. Something that could have been swept under the camera. Ah, no. Queen was just, uh, no, Queen was just joking. It was actually a joke. And everybody will laugh about it. 
So in relationship, you need to build strategic relationship. Christmas is coming. You don't buy anything for your God. Birthday is coming. Nothing. How much are they paying me, self? How much are they paying me? The money that is not enough. Wow. Oh, this, oh, this or God, they have everything. But your God has children. You don't know the birthday of your... Uh, you think it's, uh, it's office policy. Uh, okay, they play. Your, the children. I mean, this that's the way it works. You have it. Put it on your calendar. Reminder. Three days to August bed, children's birthday. And you get to the office. And you brought package. And you think he will not remember you. He will take the package home now. So you have not taken the, you have taken that relationship from office. You have taken it to the bed. Or guy or guy's wife. Is, you, you look for something. You package it. Ah, about me. Oh, yeah. Please deliver it to madame. See, even if, let, let, me, let me give you some, let me, let me share something. The, the financial market crashed. I was watching a documentary. The financial market crashed in, I think, um, two, two, 2008. So some people actually did a projection. I don't know whether some of us have seen the documentary before. And they knew that that market was going to crash. And so these people were calling their, oh, yeah, see, begin to pull out, begin to pull out, begin to pull out. As in, they knew like two months ahead. Imagine you have some hundreds of millions somewhere, and some people know that see that money was is about to enter voicemail, and you are in their good books. Are they not going to call you? They are going to call you. In fact, one happened of recent now. There's an oil company that just been sold. It has not been announced publicly, but it has been sold already. And you know when you decide, automatically they are going to sack some people. So, one of the MDs that was was a sign of the selling. Called one of these. He said, Guy, start dropping your CV up and down. <laughs> because it's better that you resign than they should sack you. His favor, see, all those favors is not just that, uh, oh, the oil of favor come upon me. No, he has poured some water. Relationship with people. Praise the Lord. Number three, you need to be diligent. So beyond relationship, be diligent. Be diligent so that you can start before kings. So that your value and contribution should speak. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16 says, A man's gift make room for him and bring him before great men. Your gift is not just your talent. It is what you can produce. What, what can you bring on the table? When they need people that can solve problems, can they call on you in that office right now? See, if they are downsizing, they say, oh, economy, blah, blah, they want to die. Nobody downsizes who is valuable. Nobody does what? Downsize who is valuable. So are you adding value? Or you are reserving your energy? To, ah, no, when I start my company, the way they are doing this company, I don't even like it. Don't worry, when I start my own, I will give it all. It's a lie. Are you giving it all right now? Number four. Treat your work with privilege. This is very important. Especially for those of us that are Christian. We've been in God's house. We God prayed, we prayed, we prayed. God gave you work. And now the work, you are not complaining. You are grumbling. You are murmuring. Treat the work with privilege. That Lord, I thank you because you gave me this work. I thank you because I can wake up and dress up. And tell everybody, I'm going to walk. <laughs> it's a miracle. Though. I had one of my brother-in-law one day was working with a particular politician. And one day, they woke up with official car he drove. They made the gate of the company closed. And the gate is still closed to today. So the same walk. That you think, oh, that rubbish walk. If they sack you today, will you not cry? So take it with what privilege? I mean, you don't have alternative. Take it with privilege. That God, <laughs> thank you for this work. It is how you treat this work. I don't worry. You know, we see people showing attitude at work. When I start my own. God will not hand over anything to you. You will see, how are you doing the one? That's front decks. You are eating chingum there. You have used chewing gum to gum everything that's spoiling their furniture. 
front desk, they will call four times before you pick the call. How are you treating the work? Because it's very important. If you don't treat it very well, there's nothing, you don't, even if you force yourself to go and start, it's a lie. It won't prosper. You don't need to pray about that one. Praise God. Number five, have unquestionable loyalty and integrity. Unquestionable. People should not say, ah, is he with us? Is he not with us? They should not be second guessing where you stand. They should not be what? Second guessing, oh, where the... No, they should not. Unquestionable loyalty and integrity. Let me share this. If there is a case of theft in your office and they round you up as one of the suspects, you need to check yourself. Whether you look like somebody that can steal or you smell like somebody that can steal, something is wrong somewhere. Something is what? It's wrong somewhere. You need to check your... It, yes, we know that you did not steal. The fact that you were part of the suspects, ah, something is wrong. It's not royalty. So you should be... In fact, when they are putting, no, 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 he can't be the one. He can't be the one. He can't be the one. In fact, as long as they say, oh, no, 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 this one, the new one, he can't be the one. When people are, people should even be confused whether are you is it the owner? How come his own is too much? How come? Ah, what the bishop rule as he carry the load for head? Yeah, you might say hey, they are using you for get. Nobody is using you. They are only building your capacity. Nobody is using anybody anywhere. If you are not used, you can't be useful. It's as simple as that. If you are not used, you can't be useful. Let them use you. One out. I often share people, I share so see. I remember before I got married, one day I walked, went for different sites. I got home that day. The phone was dead. I was in a hurry to charge the phone so that I can respond to messages. And then I just felt that, I didn't collapse, but I knew, that as in, I just packed the phone somewhere, I went to sleep. I'm not saying you should get to that point, but that dedication. So that the day you tell them that, ah, I'm tired, I need to rest. They should not be saying, ah, so I bet you, please, you can go. In fact, you need one month. Not that, uh, I need a headache, okay. Like last week, too, it was a uh, kidney that was doing. <laughs> Praise God. Unquestionable loyalty. People should be able to know that you're at work. You know, we are in the era of work from home now. They should not be questioning you. They are installing something on your laptop. They don't know whether you are at work or you are doing something else. They should know that you are at work. Then number six, as I round up, honor. Somebody say honor. honor. Romans 13 verse 7. I'll read from here. Romans chapter 13. It will be good if you can have it on the screen. He said, render therefore to all Okay, yes, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom it is due. See, there are some people, eh, eh, he's my subordinate. It happened a lot in, in the workplace. But you know that that guy holds some key, honor the person. Honor is very, very important. Uh, you are the general manager, but he's a subordinate. But you know that everything that is all going on in that department, that is the person that has the technical know-how, or not that person. Respect that person. Don't toy the person around. Don't make him person feel useless. Respect and honor the person. And lastly, lastly tonight, and which we are going to be doing Prayer of favor. You want to activate favor? You need to pray about it. In that workplace, you have tried all the principles, you have done all that you can. 
and you just realize that everybody is just like they are against you. You need a prayer of favor. That God, I need your favor. Psalm 23 verse 6 says, goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Surely what? We sang it today. Goodness, mercy, blessings. All these things shall follow me. So you need to turn it to prayer. And I want us to bow down our heads tonight. Say, Father, I want favor at my workplace. Before the people above me, before the people that are on my 